1991 was the second year of competition for the Land Rover Discovery, but there was a slight difference. These vehicles were the new TDI five-door models. The new vehicles were set to take on ideal trophy conditions. The relatively dry start of the journey would soon turn to miles and miles of deep mud. Camel Trophy 1991 provided the opportunity for the chosen competitors to drive through the heart of East Africa, abundant with some of Tanzania's most prized wildlife. From Dar es Salaam, the convoy traveled through the Celis Game Reserve, then up to the settlement of Mpanda and along the route taken by British explorer Dr. Livingston. It is fair to say that during this event, a few learned that they must pay due care and attention to their vehicles at all times. Steve Ryder picks up the story. The long convoy trailed out of Dar es Salaam past an estimated half a million people. And for the teams, the amazing size and enthusiasm of the crowds lining the street en masse from the city was to make a lasting impression. Once out of the city, the first special task site tested the use of vehicle equipment, including the kilometer recording territory. The Japanese team were the first away on task one, leaving the Turks to ponder over the instructions and their training as they waited to start next. The high bank on the left, the little corners, and on the right hand side there are big ones. Testing tracks proved not too difficult during these early stages for the Americans. The Poles, however, following a similar line, found some surprising ruts at the top of one of the first crests. This navigation and terror trip exercise is not about speed, but about covering set distances at steady average speeds, taxing nonetheless. Over-enthusiasm got the better of the Yugoslavs on their country's second ever entry into the Camel Trophy. Everything is okay. Roman, Roman, okay? Give your hand, give your hand. Okay, take us away. Okay. Cars on their side aren't particularly unusual, pretty unusual on special tasks actually. Um, unfortunately a case of uh, too much haste and not enough speed. Uh, the guys are still excited, still fired up and they're tending to panic a little bit. Um, I mean there's no damage, there's nobody hurt. Okay, done. Still with only hours of sleep to fortify them, the convoy made its way carefully through the eastern perimeter of the Cellus Game Reserve. Running for part of the way with the Rufiji River alongside, the wildlife reserve held precious sights for those lucky enough not to disturb the animals with the noise of the engines. Giraffe, wildebeest and gazelle were all spotted by the teams and added spice to the already adventurous start made on the event. The dry and dusty conditions on the early part of the Cellus reserve had flattered to deceive. Teams referred to it as the false dawn, as parched landscape gave way to ideal camel trophy conditions, testing all the participants' skills. Winching and towing rescue operations continued through the day as teams suddenly started to feel jaded. That, however, didn't stop them. The Japanese carried on as if driven by robot power. By now, the clay had been replaced by soil the consistency of coffee powder. Mixed with frequent showers, it became quicksand, which slowed man and machine dramatically. Progress was blunted. Three kilometers per hour was a good rate as the Germans struggled on with no center diff and no winch. The Spanish helped them, but by early evening, not only was the convoy split into two groups, but they all collectively faced another night without sleep and solid work. The teams laboriously laid sand ladders across long bogs, working until sunup, inching their way forward, 
as half a metre of sand tracks were laid, pulled up and laid again to take 14 vehicles across at a time. On day 11 of Camel Trophy, 23 cars set off from Mikumi by highway, the crews having enjoyed their first proper meal and sleep since Dar es Salaam. So the organisers and teams were happy with the prospect of regrouping and here were executing a safe water crossing. The sort of moment at which the unwary can be reminded that anything can happen on Camel Trophy, especially if you lose concentration just for a moment. Cheers turned to concern as Ian Chapman rushed forward to the day's crew. Luckily, it was just stitches for Marcel van Bemmel. By now, with less obstacles and the border with Burundi in sight, the mood of the convoy heightened. They are feeling so elated now. They're feeling this sense of achievement, that they're close to the goal, to Burundi and the final task areas. They're now starting to think more about the final uh, special task rather than the hardships that they've endured on, on the convoy section. They're getting excited. Uh, there's a great atmosphere amongst all the teams. They've all been working together really, really well. A little bit of disappointment. They haven't seen as many wild animals as they'd wanted, you know, the odd giraffe for breakfast and things. But, um, you know, there's, there's this tremendous mood in the camp now as we move uh, into Burundi. In the knowledge that it was the penultimate task, teams really worked their Land Rover discoveries hard. But of course, for those at the top of the competition table, Austria, United Kingdom, Turkey and France, it was to prove a tense final few hours. Having been on convoy together with just the jungle and animals for company, teams were playing out the final act in front of an appreciative media audience, and some just played to the cameras. Others were simply showing off. The French managed to fly with style and keep up their fight in the competition section. The British team of Street and Dre were fighting for first place in the Camel Trophy competition section, but they completed the task too quickly. The Austrians, they scaled the mountainous logs with a calculated indifference. But the big award for the amalgamation of all the points was still to come. The winner, Camel Trophy, 1991, and the team spirit vote. To 